Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, for another exciting laser cutting video. You may remember that recently Creality very kindly sent me their new laser cutter, the Falcon 2, to show off on the channel, and last time out I created a neat little storage box for some of my rolling stock. This time though, Creality have upped the ante because they challenged me to make a scale model that could go on my layout. Now, the storage box was fairly easy, but this is going to be a bit more involved, certainly from the design point of view, since I'm essentially going to be creating my very own kit from the ground up. Now, I had a bit of a think about what it was that I wanted to create, and I figured if I was going to go to all this trouble, really it should be something that would fit in with the theme of the modular model railway, so that I wasn't just making it for this video. Now, from the very beginning, I've always wanted to have a stone cottage or a house of some sort by the lying side, but so far I haven't come across any kits that particularly fit the look I've been going for. Uh, originally, I was thinking I would just scratch build something, but now that I've got the opportunity to laser cut my own building with the Falcon 2, I think that's going to allow me to make something much more complex and more detailed too. So, I've spent some time doing the design work, and let me show you what I've come up with. This is the cottage I've designed, and relatively speaking, it's fairly simple. You can see the main sides of the house here with some cutouts for windows and a door in the appropriate places. I've also put some tabs on the edges, and these will lock into the end pieces to create some nice strong joints. You'll notice that one of these ends also has some extra slots cut into it, and that will allow me to fit a small extension onto the end of the cottage, which you can see here. This adds a little bit of extra interest to the building so that it's not too much of a box, and again I have some cutouts for windows and doors. Speaking of those, you can see I have all of these as separately fitted parts. Now I could just cut these directly into the side pieces, but by fitting them all separately I can give the building a little bit more depth, which will just add to the detail. Similarly, to hide the joins at the side, I've also designed some coins, basically cornerstones. These will be cut from 0.3mm laser board, so very thin yet durable material. I'm also using laser board to cut strips of tiles, which I can then glue onto the three different panels that make up my roof. Again, I could have cut this directly into the roof panels, but doing it this way allows me to have a bit more texture by actually overlapping the tiles. I've also created a simple chimney stack, which should fit on top of the roof. You can see each end has tiny tabs and slots to hold it together, and these line up with the brickwork pattern I'll be engraving on the surface, so hopefully these joins will look seamless. And similarly, on the main side of the building, I've also got a stone pattern which I'm planning to engrave too. This is definitely going to take more time on the laser, but I'll really be able to see what the Falcon 2 is capable of here, and it means I won't have to clad the building in any plastic card to get the stone texture like I normally do. So, that is pretty much the entire design. Now I just need to cut it before we see how it all comes together. I'm starting off by cutting out all the smaller details first, so these are the frames for some of the windows. For anyone interested by the way, the material I'm using for this build is mostly 1.5mm MDF. You can see the brick pattern for the chimney was also engraved too. By reducing the power of the laser and increasing the speed, it ensures that it's just engraved into the surface rather than cutting straight through. When it comes to the main walls of the building, that stone texture was engraved as an image. Like I said, this does take a lot more time as the laser is basically acting like a printer as it burns away the material on the wood. And once the stone pattern was engraved, the sections could then be cut out. Now if you are doing any laser cutting, it's always a good idea to make sure that your outer cuts are done last. 
If you cut first, there's a chance that the material will move as it detaches from the rest of the sheet, which could throw off the rest of your cuts and marks. Luckily, there are a few different options in Lightburn to achieve this, but it's something to think about while you're designing as well. With the laser cutting and engraving completed, I now essentially have a kit of parts to put together my custom cottage. These are just the main wall sections, which I'm now going to assemble before adding all the details. First, I'll glue the front of the cottage onto one of the sides. You can see I have tabs and slots cut at each end, which should allow these to fit together really nicely. And simple PVA glue is all I'm using here to join these together. So far so good, I can now attach the rear of the cottage to these two walls. Then the final side is glued into position. That's the main box of the house complete, but don't forget I also have the extension, which is made up of three parts that need to be glued together in the same way. Luckily everything seems to fit together really well at the moment, certainly much better than they would if I was scratch building this. The main building has some slots at one end to accommodate the extension which with a little bit of adjustment can then be glued in place. And that is the main structure all together with minimal fuss. So now I can begin adding the details such as the lintels above the windows. Like I said before, with these being separate parts, it just gives the exterior of the building a bit of extra depth so that it's not too flat. Smaller lintels are then glued underneath the windows too. Next, it's time to add the coins that I cut using the laser board. I engraved a line down the middle of these which makes them really easy to bend into shape. And I designed these to be the same height as the building, so there's no need to cut them to size. And again, some PVA is added and the strip is glued into place. This process was then repeated for the rest of the corners. And with the coins on the extension now in place, I can move on to the next step. That next step is painting, and to get this to blend in with all the other buildings on my layout, I'm going to use my standard technique for painting stone, which consists of giving the entire building a coat of cream paint. The idea with this is that you want the paint to go into all the little nooks and crannies where the laser has cut out that nice stone pattern. Once the base coat is on and dry, I then go back over the whole thing with a grey paint. By lightly dry brushing this on, some of the cream paint underneath shows through, adding in some nice variation. It also means that the grey doesn't run into the areas between the stones, which gives the impression of mortar joins. It's a really simple technique, and like I said, I've been using this on all of the stone structures on my layout to make it all feel consistent. The next major part of the building to tackle is the roof, with the tiles needing to be added to the base. Again, these have been cut from the laser board in strips, so that I can add them on a layer at a time.
It's not as tedious as adding each individual tile, but it still took a bit of time even for a small roof like this. That said, when it's complete, it looks really good and you get that nice little bit of relief where the tiles sit on top of each other. The roof can now be painted in a rough base coat of black and I'm actually using an airbrush for this. I don't mind if a little bit of the original brown shows through either as I don't want the surface to look too uniform so I'm deliberately adding the paint thinner in some areas. Once the black base coat has dried I then go over this with a very light coat of bluish grey. This adds a little bit of colour to the slate but like I said it's a very thin coat just misted over the top to add some highlights. This is definitely something I wouldn't have been able to achieve without the airbrush. And while I have the airbrush out, I may as well use it to paint all the windows too. These are just getting a simple coat of white to make them stand out from the rest of the building. Again, the airbrush is perfect for this job, as I often find painting little details like this by hand can be really time consuming, and I often end up with paint flooding all of the nice details. You'll notice I've stuck them onto some masking tape too, which is just to stop the individual frames from being blown away. Before I add the windows to the main structure, I decided to add an interior floor to the building just to give it a bit of extra strength and help keep it square. I need to glue this in now though, otherwise it wouldn't fit in once the window frames are in place. There's also a small hole in this section too so that I can poke an LED up through it if I ever want to add lights to this building in the future. I then start working my way around the building, adding the frames behind all of the windows. And since painting these, I've glued a little bit of acetate behind each of the frames to act as glass. I'm not sure how well you can see it on the video, but every so often they reflect the light so it's definitely worth doing. The front door was added in too, and as you can see I've painted this red with the lock and the letterbox both picked out individually too. The next step will be to put the roof in place, but first I need to assemble the chimney. You can see the brickwork creates a nice set of finger joints at each end, which makes this really easy to slot together. and the top is then glued in place too. As this is brickwork, I'm gonna give it a base coat of orange. This looks a bit bright at the moment, but don't worry, I'm gonna to tone it down in just a moment. And the top is also painted in a gray color. To highlight the mortar courses between the bricks, I then put some thin white paint over the top, which is then wiped away. You can see the white remains in the gaps between the bricks and also any that's left on the surface sort of desaturates the orange as well. Back to the main building, I'm now able to add the roof in place, starting with the small slope section for the extension. And then the two main roof sections are added to both sides of the main building. The final touches are to add a strip of laser board along the top to disguise the join. And last but not least, the chimney is slotted over the top. You may notice I've also picked out a few individual bricks in brown just for some added variation. The chimney pots have also been added on top too, and for these I've actually used the central section of a cotton bud cut down and painted brown. And here is the finished cottage on a section of the layout. Now, this isn't the final position for this building. I actually have a space for this all planned out for a future module that I'll be building really soon. But you can see just how good it looks surrounded by some scenery. The building itself looks fantastic in my opinion. 
Yes, I know I'm biased because I designed and made it, but it just goes to show what you can achieve with a laser cutter. Bearing in mind that everything on this structure was laser cut, aside from the chimney pots and the acetate for the windows, it shows what a versatile machine the Falcon 2 is. Even though this has been a much more complicated project than the storage box I made last time out, again, I still feel like I'm only just scratching the surface of what's possible here. I'm really pleased with the stone effect that was engraved into the wood as well, as I was a little bit worried about how this would look in reality. Once it's all painted up though, it looks great, and it's definitely saved me from having to clad this entire structure in embossed plaster card. I do really feel like the possibilities are endless when it comes to laser cutting for model railways, and if, like me, you've been inspired to give it a go yourself, I can personally recommend the Creality Falcon 2, as it's a very easy yet capable machine to use. As before, there's a link down in the description if you want to find out more about it. Like I said, I'm really pleased with it, and I've got loads of ideas for more things I want to try out in the future too. So that's it for today's video. Again, something a little bit different, but it's definitely been a fun learning process, and I'm really happy with the results. Now I just need to build the module that will become the permanent home for this cottage, but that's it for today, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!